And we are back here with game number one of our grand final between Team Oxygen and Big Squad Troopers. I'm Pythian here with my good friend Gems. And, well, it is uh, going to be interesting to say the least, probably due to the fact that Team Oxygen just absolutely wrecked the competition in the last game. Yeah, Oxygen completely dominating commanding victory across the enemy team. A bit of a snowball stomp to be perfectly honest and let's hope this next game against the, the troopers is going to be a much closer match and let's hope they put up a good fight against team oxygen well we all see if they're able to do so um kind of reading the chat right now just make sure you're nice to each other guys i mean just uh just try to be nice to each other seriously um so anyway we got game number one of our grand final here and I'm not really sure if it's going to be any different for Team Oxygen, but uh, why don't you just take the lead for a second as I fix our overlays here. Yeah, it looks like a mur there was a Muriel and a Howitzer ban. Now, the troopers, they took note of the previous match. They took note how much the Muriel and Marty Rivia on that Muriel managed to control the game with his reversal of fortune ults to save his teammates on a consistent basis. So they banned it out, which is a pretty smart move, but it has allowed the Decker to come out from Marty and Rivia as well. So Instead, they have a Decker, they have, which is going to hopefully completely change this match. So I'm going to go through the whole teams right now. So we, we're going to have, on, t on Team Oxygen side, we have the Steel, we have the Sparrow, we have Decker, Gadget, and Grux. And on the Troopers team, we have a Lieutenant Bellica, we have Murdoch, Twin Blast, Narbash again. We've been seeing a lot of Narbash recently, and the Chimera. And it, it looks like the double carry is back for some of these teams they're loving this double carry but it can get punished if it doesn't get to the late later stages of this game so it's gonna be up to that chimera to to ensure they get there all right so we are just about ready with this next match so uh what do you say we get into it huh yeah i'm ready all right so let's start it in three two one go Okay, so we are going to transition right to that, and we'll introduce our teams right now. Team Oxygen on the left side. We've been playing Arnt, uh, Blue this match. Uh, it's Mike playing the Steel once again. I, Cameron, will be on the Sparrow here. Marty on his signature Decker that's been banned out a ton of times. Be certified. He's going to be reprising his role from game number two as a gadget. And finally, Strawdale Spell. I can say word Strawdale. Uh, he's playing a Grux this time. Meanwhile, for Big Squad Troopers, we're going to be finally seeing the Belkit in this tournament, played by Bloom Tello. Uh, fans at 64 on his Murdoch. Low Hacker, he's going to be on a Twin Blast. Angel Ale is going to be playing the Narbash. And finally, Nicolay will be playing a Chimera, and they're going for an early invade. Here comes the Italians running into the blue side jungle, and I'm going to try to avoid this a little bit. Oxygen, Scat, saw that coming. Marty Rivia, from a nice viewpoint, just backed out and... Troopers get some early game vision. Oh, well, it's Mike. He, he might be taking the early game death as well. Charges back to his tower. Oh, he's able to get back. The knockup actually misses from Blumatalo. But there are five heroes on the mid lane just going for those early ganks. And, well, Team Oxygen, we've not really seen this from a, a lot of teams. They managed to evade most of it. Yeah, it was kind of uh, a straightforward play. You saw them invade their red side jungle, which means they're going to, they're at most, going to be in your left lane in that red lane or they're going to be in mid there's you're going to see them cross so you're just going to play a bit safe before that you're going to keep the minion wave close to your turret and as you saw mike was just able to charge straight out well even with that early aggression well we might see something coming from the backside at team oxygen they're a little bit more confident this match and they go right for this wind blast he's not able to get away from this one and the gadget but manages to find the first blood in this game thought that maybe the big squad troopers were able to find it earlier but now the Team Oxygen dodge it until they're able to find a kill of their own. Yeah, Twin Blast, he needs a bit of help in the early stages of the game. He's, his jump has been nerfed a lot, so his farming isn't... He also needs help with farming because his last hit damage is really low. I, I would have preferred the Murdoch to be in the solo lane because of the mines and the traps. He can set that up just to keep himself a little bit safer. And as we saw, Oxygen instantly pressured that Twin Blast. Well, with the Twin Blast dying on the blue lane... Um, Gadget was able to actually get a ton of damage to the tier 1, and Narbash is going to come over here, maybe try to find a gank on, but this Twin Blast is only level 1 at this point. And the Thunk hits, but there isn't, I don't think there's going to be enough follow-up. Low Hacker 
Twin Blast doesn't really pressure much for kills in the early stages. Once he gets that a few card points and damage, that's when he starts to become a real threat because he's got that inherent mobility in his kit. Even though it has been nerfed, he's got slow, he's got jump, and if he can keep standing in the correct position while utilizing that parts of his kit, he can output a lot of damage into the enemy team. A fan has been left alone a little bit here on the left side. Now Marty and uh, I Cameron just going to move forward a little bit. The slow is going to hit, and he's getting hit by a ton of errors. Is there going to be one last hit on top of him? Yes, Marty is able to secure it. So both the carries going down very early for big squad troopers. Yeah, Narbash left that lane, which basically signaled to Oxygen, look, we can push, we can be extremely more aggressive. We can see Narbash in that blue lane, sitting with the twin bus helping him and I don't like this idea because certified can clear the wave extremely well. They're not this two this this top and bottom switch that's happened, similar to a lot of games where you switch players and do a lane swap, works when people hard push the towers. But certified, he's gonna be able to clear this wave. So all that's gonna happen is that red side is just gonna constantly fall behind. Yeah, be certified on the gadget, able to get a lot of those AoE abilities that are just so good for taking down minions and isn't really being harassed out by the Twin Blast at all. Um, if you guys in the chat um, want to check, I know I did say that the Big Squad Troopers were Italian. If you want to check that on me, because they do put the nationality of the team on the ESL website. So if you hit exclamation bracket and check that out, I'm pretty sure that they said Big Squad Troopers were Italian, but I might be wrong. Inside the jungle, Nicolay the, on the Chimera. He's just trying to man up against this, but there are a ton of heroes around him. And <laughs> there's only four inside of the Big Squad Trooper jungle. And while he's trying to stay alive a little bit, it's taking a little bit of time to take him down. But Team Oxygen, they're really not worried about this at all. Yeah, Oxygen constantly invading. They've seen they've, they've got that advantage with that kill that they got in the early stages. Sir is looking pretty okay in that right lane. In that blue lane, I should say, with with the nine points, and he's going to be recalling and spending all these points they've accumulated. Oxygen all on nine troopers sitting on six and three. Oxygen going to be looking for the black buff now once they've recalled, and they're going to try to take it out. Yeah, that's definitely the timing that a lot of these teams look for. And while well, Steel is up to level five as well, they've definitely got the level advantage here. And I Cameron is actually sitting on 12 card points on a spare, going back to base so that you can utilize all of them. With the red buff being picked up by Straw Bell, perhaps we see more aggression right now from Team Oxygen. Yeah, especially with its Mike hitting that level five, he's going to be looking for a shield slam the second his team is ready and set up. Most likely, Straw Bell is going to recall after taking this red. Narvash able to hit a good Mal on B certified. She was kind of running up in that lane and was able to interrupt that with his mouth. So she just sits back, clears wave a little bit more. She's really not worried about this at all. It's just kind of free harass for her. Yeah, certified is pretty safe in this lane. Even if Narvash gets done, she's going to use the speed gauge. She's going to walk away and she can keep clearing this wave, which is only going to put their Murdoch under. Yeah, she's being under... super aggressive here with the mallet missing. Um... Like, both Be Certified and uh, I Cameron so far ahead right now. Yeah, Certified's been allowed to sit in here, and Chimera's looking for this game. Yeah, Chimera's looking for it. Coming around from behind, he's definitely going to have to use the ultimate for it. But B Cert, he was just sitting a bit far back, and well, he's actually going back on to Nikolay. The mallet does come through, and does he look for the ultimate? They have to be a little bit scared. B Certified actually just moves forward. He's got the rest of his team coming in. Narbash uses the song of his people. The Tesla to him, going to get dropped down a little bit. And here comes a Steel Slam in from the side. They're also going to get the Smash and Grab. They've got a ton of damage and just a huge amount of damage from B Certified and the rest of the crew. AoE right on top of their faces. And while they move off, we've also got a kill over on left as Murdoch goes down again. So uh, perhaps we see a tower going down. Narbash trying to do everything he can, but he might have stepped up a little bit too far, taking so much damage. Angel Ale gets just absolutely killed by Straw Bell. And with all the AoE from Gadget, it should be a right side tower going down for her. Yeah, this swap has not panned out for the troopers right now. They've put Murdoch in this essentially unwinnable lane in a 2v1 scenario. And he hasn't been able to fend for himself at all. And it's, I, I'm not a big fan. Twin Blast should have either been soloed. I don't. They were never going to push that blue lane to get the tower advantage. So all they've done is put their own player at huge disadvantage. Fanti64 is sitting at six card card points right now. Where Oxygen sitting at 15. He's only got 15 farm. He's been denied farm this whole entire game by Oxygen, and it's it's not looking pretty right now. It's definitely not looking pretty at all. Just 
And they're just using their combos so well. And that's really been the name of the game for Team Oxygen. They just work so well together. They take every advantage they can. And when it's time for them to group up, they do. And when they get that early advantage, it's just so easy for them. It's Mike does yeah. get knocked up in the mid lane, but there's really just no upside here for big squad troopers at all. It's Mike just waiting for that ultimate, I think. I think it's it's up in the next sort of 20 odd seconds, and we're going to see a fight probably break out. Well, the, don't, the drone does get dropped down a little bit. Bellica forced to back away, though. There is going to be the Decker containment field put down. She's been knocked back right into the enemy. It's Mike taking a lot of damage from the tower, but he is able to charge away. But the laser comes through. The long arm of the law just grabbing up. Uh, the seal there, and it's Mike Diet dove a little bit too far for that. Angel L, well, he's moved forward a little bit. Smash him, grab, pulls him back. Now he's right underneath all of the gadget damage, and he's going to try to back away, but Beastar going underneath the tower a little bit. We'll also drop down the bot. We'll see if that's enough to take him down. Nikolay on the backside, though. He's taken a lot of damage from this, and I think it... Oh, not quite enough. Does he get out of this? He's still in range of Marty, and Marty finishes off the kill. Just Decker going ham. And they've also taken down the the first tower in the mid lane as well. Yeah, Oxygen, it looked like a good one-for-one -one trade for Troopers, but Oxygen managed to carry on this advantage and just took that tower along with it. Fanted doing well with that long arm of the law just to take a, a quick pick here with it. Helps him out a little bit. He needed those card points quite desperately right now, and that's going to help him get slowly back into this game, but still so far behind for them right now. Yeah, so at least Murdoch was able to get a little bit off of that last fight, but I think we still get the same question as last game. Like, even if uh, big squad troopers are able to get one of those random kills on the map with the, the laser and stuff, does it really give them all that much? It depends on the bounties. If th I think currently they need to get the kills on the people who've got a much higher bounty on them. So certified he's 4-0, and it'd be really nice for him to get that kill on him just to get a bit of more cxp in their pockets to spend and that's what they're going to really need they're going to really need to take picks on whoever they can wherever they can right now while oxygen are sort of farming their jungle and focusing on different objectives for me right now it's kind of interesting the way big squad troopers are moving around the map they seem to be trying to get some kind of sustained farm and we're only 10 minutes in but they seem to be having a large propensity towards like farming the lanes right now, which just allows Team Oxygen to really set up their, their opportunities around the map if they want to go for a fight, if they want to go for a tower. They've just got a lot of time to decide right now. They're not really playing fast at all. Yeah, Team Troopers are giving Oxygen all the time in the world to set up. Oxygen, they, they love to set up their plays. They'll be like, we're going to take black when it spawns. We're going to ward up the, the red side jungle in preparation for it. Then we're going to take the fight where we know exactly what's going to happen. Beast and as we might have been caught out. He gets hit by the mallet. Angel L, he's going right forward, beating those drums. But he's got the speed gauge to try to get away. But he's been dropped down. And now, while well, he's actually going to put down the Tesla Dome, he's going to be able to get the nice burst damage. He's doing a ton. And he's managing to stay alive. Twin Blast uses the ultimate, but it's really not doing anything to him. Oh, yeah, Chimera uses his ultimate. Actually does take down Beast Certified. That was at least one kill for them. But Straw Bell, he's just so super damage at this point. Nikolay and the rest of uh, Big Squad Troopers, they absolutely have to back away from this right now as Ed Smike is just punching Blue Matello down. Comes in with the slam. He's underneath the tower. Pushes him back and he's going to keep going for this. Probably he's going to take a ton of damage from the tower as a result of this, but all of the enemies down for Team Oxygen and they are free to go on whatever lane push they want as they get a full five-man team wipe. The Oxygen certified dying there but he died for his team. He he put, he managed to get the Tesla Dome down. He managed to survive long enough and put up a huge amount of damage. That meant when his team came, even though it was a 4v5 at that point, the damage was done, to be honest. They had taken way too much and they couldn't escape. And they managed to get the full team wipe off of Sir. What looked to be a good start to the fight from Troopers just turned horribly wrong just because of how much damage Servite was able to put out. So even at that point, with... Big squad troopers able to get an advantage off of the onset like they're still not able to take a fight just because of how easy it is for team oxygen to rotate I mean you can take the gadget down, but she's gotten all of her skills off at that point. The kill is uh, probably not as good and I mean at what point are our big squad troopers able to turn that kind of fight to their advantage? The the problem is uh, was allowed to do a lot. He wasn't he, he was allowed to take 
I'll hold full that, combo. but we've got another Steel Slam coming through. Hits on a two. Twin Blast just knocked up in the air. Trying to do as much damage as possible. Actually gets knocked to the high ground, so maybe he's able to get out of this. As Angel L, he stuns its mic, and while there was no backup for him there, just some zoning of the BST heroes. Meanwhile, Oxygen, 12-minute Harambe buff. OP buff right now is being taken by Team Oxygen. They're going to want to drop this off. They're probably going to recall, spend their points again. Because they're sitting on a few points on a, a lot of their members. So, like, Mike's sitting on a couple of points. Uh, everyone's sitting on a few couple of points, especially with the CXP that was given from the the, the OP buff. And it looks like they want to try and finish this game as soon as possible. Yeah, that should definitely be the style for Team Oxygen, especially after looking at the first series. They're just kind of wanting to get through this game, and maybe they have a couple of scrims or something set up as well, because they're just, like, just ripping right through these teams. Now, low hacker, I would have liked to see you maybe recalled. You can see where the buff is. You're a bit of half health, but I really like the strategy that troopers are trying to do right now. It is the the bushwhack strategy. You sit there, you wait for someone. The enemy team will probably suspect it because they can't see anyone in the lane. But let's see how it works out for them. It's if they can get that pick quick enough with everyone focusing the same person, it this might actually turn on. It's just such a weird strategy. Like, they're not even hardly moving. They're basically setting themselves up for a perfect steel slam into whatever combo <laughs> Team Oxygen would choose to throw at them, and they're not doing anything right now. They're just kind of waiting. I don't really know the reasoning behind this, but it is fun to watch, I guess. <laughs> In any case, here comes Team Oxygen. Marty just goes up to the high ground. There was the trap, and they set it, but they're doing hardly any damage to her. Here comes the Steel Slam. Hits on the three. Tesla Doom drop down, just grouping up for all of the damage for Team Oxygen. I have no idea why they thought that was going to be good at all. They drop down the orb. Nikolay, the only one up right now for, for the BST boys, and he's going to try to run through that Shadow Pool. But I don't really see him getting the escape down at all. Grex just charges through and is able to find the kill there onto Chimera. That was a plan that I guess BST thought might work, but it was just not very well laid at all. And a very easy fight for Oxygen. Yeah, when you want to stop the old prime fights, you want to fight in that crucial little gap between the jungle entrance and the old prime drop off. Because that is the na most narrow gap for the enemy team to pass through. And you can push out a lot of your skills through that and get the fight you want in a good spot. Sitting there allows Oxygen to spread out, they get to use their abilities and you're the ones that are clamped up. So the first inhibitor of the game going down and Team Oxygen don't really show any sign of stopping. They've taken the OP, they bring two heroes back in with the smash and grab. Straw Bell, he's the stand-in for them I believe and he's really just putting down a clinic for now, really working well with the rest of the Oxygen team, but when you have a team that's as experienced as them, it's pretty easy to work with them. Uh, another Steel Slam hitting on only to Angel Ale, and while they made it to the Grand Final, kind of by default, and <laughs> Team Oxygen are showing that they are the ones that truly belong here, taking just a huge fight and a huge game up against BST. Yeah, that was extremely well played by Team Oxygen. All Prime exactly sort of step-by-step -step procedural way of dropping it off they took the fight they gave it to Decker who was the tankiest member of their team who had the jump who can still use their abilities from the top and be useful which I quite liked and as you saw completely controlled victory from Oxygen they they had early good early game vision and while it looked like Trooper had some nice ideas at the beginning they, they just didn't execute them they had the nice invade where they got some vision they didn't execute on the gank on its mic in mid lane. They could have taken a lot of things. Things could have gone differently had they executed and done those strategy they had planned out correctly. Or would they? I mean, our, our team oxygen is so good that even if you do hit your your timings and your your ganks against them, are just team oxygen? Do they work so well as a team that even if you do get into an even even a card points team fight against them, will they still win? I, th I feel like because Oxygen have substitutes, you can take advantage of it a lot more. Because we know they're playing with a, a, a few substitute players that they've brought in for, for today's tournament, that you can take advantage of potential lapses in communication. And as we saw, at the early stages of the game, Trooper should have gotten that kill on its mic at the beginning, especially S5. And that could have matched... If they had gotten that kill, it would have made their invade a l have the benefit they wanted because they would have gotten the CXP. It would have meant that the the CXP they lost from not being in lane would have been okay, because they would have made it up for it with that kill. And because it failed, Oxygen just managed to get free advantage. 
Well, a free advantage indeed it was. We had three kills right off the bat for Team Oxygen, and they rode that to a pretty simple and easy victory up against BST. They did give up a few kills, kind of a different from the first series, but it was only two, and it really wasn't that much at all. So with that being said, we're going to go into game number two as soon as we can in this grand final of the ESL Community Cup Paragon Tournament. I'm Pythian, he's Gems. You can follow us on Twitter, they're going to be in the chat. Thank you all for watching, and as always, cheers.